Hi, Navpreet. Let's take a look at this new set of essays you've sent us. Um, I'm sorry about the delay in getting it to you. There was a problem with the server for the last few days, and so it um, wasn't allowing any emails to come into um, our email. But it's up and running again, so let's get into this correction for you. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages of travel. Let's see what you wrote. There is an upsurge in people traveling to domestic or international destinations nowadays. Although traveling brings some advantages, such as opportunities to learn about a culture and to gain mental peace, there are some disadvantages as well, which include huge travel expenses and health risks to the tourists. Okay, so far so good. We'll talk about this more in detail, but let's take a look at your body paragraphs. Needless to say, one of the benefits of traveling to tourist destinations is an opportunity to explore the culture of the Mm, we don't really call it the visiting place. That's not really natural English here. You could have called it uh, the destination. That would have been, well, you already said destination here. Okay, so I guess you can't. Let's see. Um, of the location, and then maybe it's it's like implied. Um, let me see. One of the benefits of traveling to tourist destinations is an opportunity to explore. Ah, why don't we do this? Uh, an opportunity to explore the culture of the new place. So, I mean, that's all you really need to do. This is true because people can learn authentically about a place's languages, cuisines, and history from the natives by exploring the place, which is motivating as well as entertaining. For instance, many universities, including Oxford University without the, organize educational tours every year for linguistic students to gain, attain cultural knowledge by traveling to different places. Okay. Okay. Additionally, vacationing is also considered favorable for people's mental health. This is possible since it provides an escape from stressful life. The stressful life. Okay. An optimistic way to put things into perspective and to regain mental strength to tackle complex life situations by changing the surrounding. Therefore, it is clear that traveling offers not only learning opportunities, get rid of the, but also stress relief. Okay, it's, it's fine. It's fine. However, there are some obvious shortcomings which cannot be overlooked. One of these is the high cost, singular, of travel, which includes but is not limited to extortionate flight tickets and accommodation charges. In order to afford a holiday, it requires substantial mm, it requires a substantial amount of savings from the salary and sometimes extended working hours, which means people have to make long term compromises to be able to attain a short term pleasure. For example, it is common in Canada for people to work for more than 75 hours a week for several months to save funds for a week-long trip to famous tourist destinations such as Paris. Furthermore, extending working hours for a long period and traveling to crowded places, um, not a merge possibility, that's the wrong word here. You could say create possibilities of health problems. This means when people have to travel through different locations, it is possible to get infected with contagious diseases such as coronavirus, one word, which not only poses risks to their health, but also to others. Thus, it's clear beyond doubt that traveling can cause huge expenses and threats to people's health. Okay, that's um, certainly well developed. We'll talk about it in a minute. Let's look at your conclusion. In conclusion, although... Oh, even though there are positives of traveling, which are learning and attaining peace of mind, some negatives should also be considered, such as heavy travel costs and health issues. Okay, um, I thought you did a very good job of this essay. Um, I want to maybe just discuss one thing here regarding the disadvantages of travel. Um, A lot of people do what you did, and a lot of people develop this in the way that you did, talking about, you know, how expensive it is and how there are risks associated, like, um, uh, you know, like health and, you know, maybe theft or some sort of crime or whatever. 
Um, and I think that when we think about the advantages of something, or we think about the disadvantages of something, especially something like tourism, we really do think about it in a more, in a broader kind of way. Okay. So just as we think about tourism and its positives as being like a wonderful way to gain new perspectives and to learn about culture and to really broaden one's horizons. In the same way, I want to think about the negatives of tourism also in a broader, maybe more societal kind of way. So what do I mean? I mean that um, rather than, you know, being like, oh, well, travel is expensive. Well, you know, not necessarily, because if you're traveling domestically, if you're traveling, say, by bus or by train, maybe like two hours from your home, that's still travel. But it's difficult to argue that that's expensive. Do you understand what I mean? So I think that this idea of travel being expensive is um, it's an inconvenience, but it's not necessarily the rule. Like travel doesn't have to be. So counting the expense as a disadvantage, I don't feel is really 100% uh, on the mark here. I think what you could have talked about is um, maybe what happens to the places where a lot of tourists go. So think uh, about places like Venice or think about places like Santorini, uh, where the um, the authorities in those places have talked about limiting the number of tourists that go there because the massive influx of tourists creates huge problems for the infrastructure, for the residents, and, you know, for these locations themselves. All right. That's a disadvantage of travel. Like, um, that, you know, some of these places become overrun by tourists. Okay. They become overrun and this creates a lot of problems, uh, for these places and their everyday life. Okay. In terms of infrastructure, in terms of quality of life. Um, so that's kind of a problem. Um, you can also talk about the environmental damage that is associated with tourism. Everybody knows that jet fuel is a huge contributor to, um, you know, emissions uh, into our atmosphere, and that's a problem. But even if you don't fly, think about, you know, any type of vehicle you use for travel. This, too, is really increasing our carbon footprint. And so that's one of the kind of downsides of travel. So this is what I mean by looking at it in a more kind of spherical way and not like, oh, you know, hey, you might get robbed or, you know, you might get, um, you know, you might get sick when you travel. You might break your arm. So do you understand what I mean? Think about it in a little like broader, wider kind of sense. Um, that's what we mean when we talk about the disadvantages of something like this. But on the whole, I thought you did a great job uh, as far as the essay goes. And I hope you don't mind me giving you these suggestions, but I do want you to um, I do want to help and I do want to give like some ideas for how else you could be thinking about some of these, um, IELTS topics. So, um, I thought that what you did was fine, but again, um, I wasn't really a hundred percent on board with the whole thing about it being expensive. And so I wanted to give you some ideas. All right. Let me take a look now at your task. one. All right. Let's see what you told your friend about your new job. Dear Amy, how are you? I'm writing this letter to tell you that I finally switched to another company just last month. Honestly, I felt the need of a job change due to the lack of opportunities for promotions and salary hikes in my last organization. Since there was no scope of further learning and progress, I decided to look for a better employment opportunity in a new organization. Okay, so um, I'm very happy that you asked Amy how she is. That's important. That's a really important thing to do in an informal letter. But I felt like the next sentence was really straight out of a formal letter. This isn't how we talk to our friends. This isn't how we write to our friends. So let's talk a little bit about what would be more natural here. Um, dear Amy, how are you? Um, I can't tell you how glad I was to receive your letter. Uh, your news is so exciting. I have some news of my own to tell you. Okay. 
So something like that. Or, dear Amy, how are you? I'm sorry I haven't written, but I've had a lot of changes in my life. Uh, so I can finally take a breath and tell you what has happened. So something like that would really be the way we communicate with our friends. All right. This to me is straight out of a formal letter. Like I am writing this letter to inform you about whatever. Okay. So make sure that the tone and the message of what you're saying sounds friendly. Um, I, I also feel like this might have leaned a little formal, but um, I can overlook it and I want to see what else you wrote in the rest of this letter. Now I am working for a multinational corporation which has several offices worldwide. The senior members and management are greatly cooperative. We don't really say that. Our extremely cooperative would be better, especially during the initial time and understanding the business processes. What's more, I will be promoted to a senior level position and will be offered an on-site opportunity in London for one year after the completion of six months. All right, this uh, still doesn't really feel particularly informal or friendly to me. Um, this could be to whomever. This could be to your college professor. This could be to, um, it's, it's rather neutral, but definitely not informal. Um, let me think about it for a second. I'll see if I can come up with maybe some expressions and some language um, that would have made this feel a little more appropriate in terms of tone. Apart from this, I had to tell you that I'm getting engaged next month and the marriage date will also be fixed soon. Since there are government restrictions due to the pandemic, only close friends and relatives will be invited to the function. I will send you complete details about the event with a formal invitation. I really hope you can make it to the function. All right, function, function, avoid that. Um, to the festivities, to the uh, wedding. You should call it a wedding. Um, that would have been better. I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. So, um, yeah, what we really need to work on here, Nafri, is some of this language, this informal language. I'd like you to um, find some resources on informal uh, language when we write to friends. All of this really just did not feel particularly informal or friendly to me. So I want to look at it again and maybe give you some of those suggestions that I talked about. All right, so here in this paragraph, for example, uh, now I'm working for a multinational corporation, which has several offices worldwide. I can't tell you how great the senior members and management are, full stop. Uh, they've been so wonderful with me, especially during the initial time uh, that, um, that I've been really having a hard time getting to understand the business processes. Okay, this is more friendly, this kind of language. Um, it feels more conversational and more like how we would talk to a friend. Uh, now here you could have said something like, do you want to hear the best part? They've promised me a promotion to a senior level position. Okay, full stop. Or rather, exclamation point. I may even be offered an on-site opportunity in London for one year after the completion of six months. That means I would be so much closer to you. I can't wait. So this is the way we talk to our friends. This is the way we show our enthusiasm and um, have a, a friendlier tone. Now, even here, you're talking about getting married or rather you're getting engaged. So um, how about something like this? So while my work life has had some exciting developments, my personal life has too. You won't believe it, but I'm getting engaged next month. Again, exclamation point. Uh, we haven't set the date for the wedding yet, but we will soon. Okay, so this is just to give you some ideas about how you could write this in a friendly way. There are tons of resources all over the internet, and I'm sure you have some, uh, you know, perhaps uh, available to you um, for how to write 
some of this in a more friendly, warmer fashion. Okay. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, like I said, a lot of this was really good, but the tone was really, um, just too, too formal throughout. Um, everything else was okay. Oh, and one last thing. Look at this. I look forward to seeing you soon. This was really rather sudden. It was a rather abrupt ending to the letter, uh, which also made it feel really not informal, not a friendly letter. So uh, I really hope you can make it to the wedding. Um, that's all the time I have for now. I can't wait to hear from you. Uh, I send you my love. Okay, that would be better. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Looking forward to seeing more work. And until um, the next time, uh, good luck.